The Easter wreath kit from Craft Buddy contains some beautiful flowers, a wreath base, foliage and Easter eggs for you to create a gorgeous display. We're going to start with the simplest of the flowers to create. Taking petal shape E, just rub them in between your fingers to individually separate each fabric petal. You could add some extra colour to these using ink pads or alcohol inks, but they're a gorgeous orange centre with the yellow outside petals. These will create gazanias or the treasure flower or African daisies. So you'll also need stem six. This is a double stem that will hold the petals. The centre stem is number seven in the kit and end cap number five. I just separate them out once I've prepped the petals and then we can get making. So take your centre stem number seven, place through the hole of petal E, attach the end cap number five and just push together with your fingers. These will then hold on to each individual stem and there's no need to glue them into place. We'll make several within the set and the end of your double stem will fit perfectly onto the connector on your wreath. The next flower in the set are the gorgeous pansies. I'm going to take the largest petals and separate them out. This is letter C within your kit. It's worth taking time to make sure you don't have any stuck together as that will affect the amount that you can make within the kit. We also have petal shape D to complete the pansies and again rubbing them between your fingers to separate out. You may find that it helps to have a damp sponge so that you can wet your fingers making this bit a little bit easier. We're going to use the end caps number five the same as from our daisies and we're also going to use the pollen centers which are labeled as number four in your kit and the same double stems that we used labelled as number six. Take the pollen centre straight through the middle of petal C, the largest, then add petal D behind it, making sure that you fill the gaps in between open petals from the first and attaching the end cap on. We also have the beautiful mapiola or stocks. I'm going to start with the white, but we're also going to make them in purple too. Now these petals are a little bit harder to separate than the ones we've been using before. So I would suggest separating them into smaller little piles and working with them in that way. You can also bend the petals out. So they have a dome in the middle, pop this upwards and this will arch the petals out and make it easier for you to be able to get in between them. We're also going to use stem number three. This has little buds up at the top and we'll start working and adding our petals about a quarter of the way down. Each stem has little teeth that will hold the bottom of the petal in place and you want to make sure that the top teeth come up through the centre hole in the flower. This will hold it perfectly into place without any need for glue or end caps. And the last flowers that we need to create are the beautiful hyacinths. Separate out petal A just as before. We're also going to use stem number two and the little caps that will hold these petals into place number one. These will all come attached on a little vine and just pull them to separate. So we're going to take the petal, place onto the connector. You can see again, it's got teeth at the top and the bottom. Once you've slid the petal on, use the little yellow cap dome side down to hold that into place and that will prevent any of the petals coming off of those teeth. There 
there are several different types of foliage in these kits and I'm starting with the one that we have the most of as this is going to give me a lovely lush base for us to work around and to put our flowers on afterwards. Just simply take each little cluster off of the vine and these have connectors on the bottom that will perfectly fit onto the spikes of your wreath. I always work with one type of foliage first and just make sure that I can evenly distribute it around the base before adding on each one afterwards. I'm working on every other to every three connectors and I'm doing one in the inner circle, one in the center ring and one on the outer spike. If you find that you get three quarters of the way round the wreath and they're too spaced together, just work around, take a few off and fill any gaps that you might find. I'm now going to add some wider coverage using the rose uh, leaves. These have a double-sided cluster and a hole through the middle of the stem that will again fit onto the wreath perfectly. If you wanted more security, you could glue these on, but it's the process of making it all interchangeable that means that you can adapt the wreath to maybe uh, special occasions, and of course you can change flower heads and foliage whenever you need. Make sure again that you evenly distribute these leaves around. I find that I alternate the direction just by spinning them on the loops to make sure I get really nice even coverage. We've also got the beautiful ivy. These are triple leaf connectors, again with a hole through the center. And I like to add these to the outside so that I get really nice texture and a little bit more coverage on the outside of the wreath. Just go around, fill the gaps, and remember we can always change it if you're not happy with how it looks. Now I'm going to add on my flowers in a slightly different method. I like to hot glue gun my flowers so that I can change the direction of them against the foliage and I like to do three quarter swags with a bow to fill the gap. I'm starting with the daisies and just placing them in between the foliage, adding in my larger ones, the hyacinths, and I'll always make sure that the swag tears out and graduates out to the smaller flowers at both sides. I'm going to add in the stalks just for that lovely balance. I'm changing the direction of the flowers. And once I'm happy with the positions, I'll take a hot glue gun and attach these to the wreath base, perhaps other flowers around them and the foliage. In your kits, if you're a little unsure, you will have full step-by-step -step instructions and a design guide to create a beautiful wreath. You can add the eggs in exactly the same way by also attaching them to the connectors as they have holes through the base. You can personalize your wreath, play with it, have fun, and of course enjoy the interchangeable and modular system of Forever Flowers.